Welcome to the Visual Distortion Movie Review Show with me, Jekyll69. On today's show, we will be reviewing the Oscar-nominated film, Birdman. How did we end up here? This place is horrible. Smells like balls. We had it all. You were a movie star, remember? Who was this guy? He used to be Birdman. I like that poster. You wrote this adaptation? I did, yeah. And you're directing and starring in your I, adaptation. That's yeah. ambitious. Are you afraid people will say you're doing this play to battle the impression that you're a washed up comic strip character? Absolutely not. That's why 20 years ago I said no to Birdman 4. Hold the mask off! You do have the mask off! Now you're about to destroy what's left of your career. Oh, we should have done that reality show they offered us. Shut up. Oh, ah, I'm gonna crab up on your ass. Fucking choke you out. Oh. You know I'm right. You're so annoying. Hey, what's up? Why don't you try to rest a little bit? Face it, Dad. You're doing this because you're scared to death, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. And you know what? You're right. You don't. Baby, can you understand me now? Sometimes I get a little mad Don't you know no one alive can always be an angel When things go wrong, I seem to go bad Listen to me. I'm just a You are the original, man. Let's make a comeback. That's what I'm talking about. You're a bird, man. You are a god. Shit. Music. He's a Hollywood clown in a lacquer bird suit. Yes, he is. But he's going out on that stage and risking everything. This is about being respected and validated. Remember, that's what you told me. That's how you got me into this shit. I got a chance to do something right. I got to take it. Let's go back one more time and show them what we're capable of. Martin! There you go, you motherfucker. Keaton as Regan, Emma Stone as Sam, Zach Gilavianakis as Jake, Naomi Watts as Leslie, Andrea Riseborough as Laura, and Edward Norton as Mike. What a truly amazing film this really is. I didn't really know what to expect in when I went to go watch it. I knew it was about Birdman, played by Michael Keaton, who used to play Batman in the 80s and also in the early 90s with 92 Batman Returns, trying to show himself as a writer-director and as a true actor within his artwork by hosting and producing and directing a play on Broadway which is met by a lot of hatred by the film industry and the film critics and play critics because they just want him to be Birdman again, that's what they remember him for. So it's kind of art imitating life or life imitating art this film is, but it's also got a really weird undertone because throughout the film and in the very first opening scene of the film, Michael Keaton's character can levitate things which is a bit out of left field and he also talks to his Birdman voice which is almost like Batman but not quite, it doesn't quite have the gruffness but it does have the deepness, it kind of has the deep manliness but it's not the gruffness of Batman that let you know of now. It's not quite that gruff, not quite that, you know, broken voice. It's just kind of this, kind of a big action man, yeah, kind of voice. That's Birdman's voice and you hear it throughout the film when Michael Keaton's character is going through something or he's 
got to do anything. He's so depressed that he really needs to bring himself up and he beats himself down so much because of everything that has happened to him since he released the last Birdman film. And they talk about a Birdman 3, which he did make, but obviously he was never in Batman 3. That was Val Kilmer which only lasted one film, and then they made Batman 4, which they should never have made, starring George Clooney, but they do talk about Michael Keaton making a fourth Birdman film in the film Birdman. The film itself is a very artsy film. It's fantastically directed. Every little bit of it has been choreographer's perfect Every little bit of it has been choreographed perfectly. The whole stage, the way the house is built, the outside, the insides of everything, when they're out on the streets, it's all been thought of meticulously. The camera angles, what they're going to be doing with the camera, and how the actors are going to take it, where their positions are. And the reason for this is brilliant. The reason is because, and this is what makes this film so amazing, is the fact that it is a huge piss take out of all the comic book movies that are coming out right now. Because so you have Michael Keaton, who played Batman, in it. And if you look really closely, he has the Iron Man beard. You know one of these? It's just not a normal goatee. And then you have Edward Norton in it, who's playing a belligerent, hard to work with, overpaid actor. And he played the Hulk. And the reason why he got replaced for Mark Ruffalo was because he was a belligerent, overpaid, hard working actor. And he asked for more money. He was already getting paid buckets load. And Marvel said, no, we're not going to give you more money. And if you're going to act like this, you can leave. So they go into that as well. Emma Stone is, of course, in Spider-Man, the, well, the amazing Spider-Man film series. And she plays a young, out of rehab girl, a bit like Lindsay Lohan. She's doing the whole film actress that's young, suddenly appeared out of nowhere, made it big and went on to drugs and ruined her career kind of storyline. So they're all doing different parts of storylines from what's happened so far. So Michael Keaton's doing his, I was a big actor, I was a huge actor, then I did a comic book film and I never did anything quite as big again, except for of course Birdman, which is taking piss out of it, which kind of makes it ironic in a way. You've got the Hulk in there and there's a fight between Michael Keaton and Edward Norton. So it's basically Batman versus the Hulk. And it's such a pathetic, realistic fight that it just makes you wet yourself seeing Batman and the Hulk just kind of... You know, they, they don't really fight, they don't really throw any punches. There are a few punches thrown in it when needed, but it's just brilliant the way they do all that with the comic book. But it's brilliant the way that they go about taking the piss out of comic book films that way and the fact that Michael Keaton can't seem to get away from the shadow of the Birdman, not even when he's alone or by himself, and it seems to have twisted him and warped his career. This film, in respect, is a bit of a warning to everybody that is making it huge in the comic book films at the moment. It's kind of like, well, you've done it, but what are you going to do afterwards? Are you going to get pigeonholed and be only used for those parts and find yourself with no career when you're 50 or 60? I don't know. Yes, they do take the piss out of other comic book films as well by things that they say, television programs that they're watching, props in the background, certain things that they ask for, and lines of dialogues, but also with makeup. They take the piss out of Spider-Man because when he walks through New York Times Square, there's Spider-Man where he normally is, dancing in the background. Obviously they take the piss out of Batman, referring to the two actual release dates of Batman and Batman Returns, starring Michael Keaton. They also take the piss out of the Hulk with Edward Norton and what they do with him, showing that he's got a great sense of humour. Uh, they also 
go into the psyche of people like wanting to be free and wanting to be able to reach their goals and just soar with their goals by getting them done and having no one hold them back they could go into the frustration of this and this is kind of why people like Marvel films it's because it's an escape from reality and this guy can't seem to escape from reality and then they also take the piss out of Sin City's Marv as well. I'm not going to say how because that would ruin it, but you've got to keep your eye out for it because it is brilliant. In fact, everything about this film is brilliant. And the best bit, I thought, out of all of it, or at least the most imaginative bit, and that's why it's the best because of how imaginative it really is, is as they're walking along, you get uh, free-flowing jazz. That's the main music, you know, free-flowing, very organic very liberating kind of jazz you know you sit down you play and you create what you want which a lot of actors want they want to be able to improvise and be able to show their range and everything which freeform jazz does which a lot of franchise films don't do and you can't really do on the play so this is why they go with that chaotic freeform jazz but as they're walking along certain areas like outside or inside you'll see a little drummer there which kind of says why there's music happening in the background they try and put it into the film and the film is a bizarre and weird film but it is so well thought out and so meticulously done and everything that happens in the film happens for a reason and dialogue happens for a reason the actors that they've chosen are chosen for a reason you know it's just a gritty, realistic, weird film that takes the piss out of comic book movies. Five out of five film, and I hope it definitely wins a few of the Oscars that it has been nominated for, because it deserves it. Thank you very much for watching the Visual Distortion Movie Review Show with me, Jekyll69, reviewing the Oscar-nominated film Birdman. Remember to check out the rest of my channel for some more great reviews and other interesting videos. Until next time, share and subscribe and keep smiling. This is the Jekyll69 channel where interesting shit happens every day. So remember to subscribe and comment to our channel for interesting shit to do with the world of technology. Hits on Twitter, film reviews, my life with Android and Kickstarter. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and comment. And until next time, keep your shit interesting.